boys and girls, it's Miss Miranda with story time. A nest full of eggs. Here's a, we read about a chicken. Now we're going to talk about a robin. And some of you have been watching the eagle, the eagle in the nest and see the babies inside of there. This is similar. Let's see what happens. Written by Priscilla Bells Jenkins and illustrated by Lizzie Rockwell. Listen, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. That is the song of a robin. It must be spring. Up in a tree outside my window, a pair of American robins is very busy. They are gathering dry weeds and twigs and they work carefully, but quickly. It is almost time. The female weaves the weeds and twigs together with bits of mud that dry like glue. She adds more mud, pressing it with her breast into a cup shape. She then lines the bottom of the cup with a bed of soft grasses. There, the nest is strong, safe, and snug. Now it is ready. Over the next few days, the female robin lays four beautiful blue eggs in the nest. She is sitting on the nest now, keeping the eggs warm, and her mate is close by. He sings loudly, warning other robins to stay away. One, two, three, four. Isn't it amazing that they don't have arms and legs like we do and they use their beak to build something so complex and safe for their baby? Inside each egg is a new life. It is growing very fast. The yellow yolk is its liquid food. The clear albumen, which we call the white of an egg, is its watery cushion. Day after day, the mother robin sits on the eggs, patiently waiting. Here's an illustration of an egg, and you have that in your science journal. The air sac, the yolk, and the albumen, and on the outside is the shell. After three days, the life begins to look like a head, a backbone, and a heart and eyes already beating. There it is, starting to grow, and here it is, five days. After five days, a beak, two wings, two legs, and a tail are taking shape. It's beginning to look like a baby bird in there. After about eight days, the robin is completely formed right down to its toes. By the twelfth day, the robin has grown so big, it is squeezed inside the egg, and it has used up all the food and space. Listen, peep, 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 peep. A tiny beak is breaking through an eggshell. The eggs are hatching. Crack! Out rolls a baby robin. Soon there are four wobbly little robins in the nest. Their parents feed them worms, berries, seeds, and insects. But the hungry nestlings are always peeping and squawking for more food. Good morning, everyone. A lot of you have seen these nests at your homes. In a few days, the baby robins open their eyes. Soft, warm down feathers begin to appear on their bodies. The bigger feathers grow and cover the down. They keep the robins dry and give them color and shape. About 14 days after hatching, the robins have grown their wing and tail feathers. These are their flight feathers, and these feathers will help them to fly. Feathers are light, but very strong. They are what makes birds so different from all other creatures on earth. Only birds have feathers. Feathers come in many sizes, shapes, and colors. Here's pictures of different types of bird feathers. They all look different. They're all very strong. The little tiny hummingbird feather to the big giant peacock feather. Have you ever seen feathers? Robins, like all birds, take good care of their feathers. They comb them and straighten them with their beaks, and they clean them by taking baths in water or dust. Now, the young robins are ready to leave their nest, but they are not good flyers yet. They are still learning. For the next few days, their parents stay close to them and bring them food. Soon the robins are ready to fly and hunt on their own. Now they can take care of themselves. 
Next spring, they will find mates and have nests of their own. Birds live all over the world. There are about 9,000 different kinds. Each kind of bird makes a nest in its own special way. Birds usually hide their nests where they can bend with nature's blend with nature's colors. A bird's nest can be a gathering of leaves on the floor, a hole in a tree, a woven pouch, so many different types of beautiful nests. A scrape on a rocky cliff, a gigantic heap of branches, a floating platform, a woven cup of plants and spider silk, that's a hummingbird nest, a cup of mud, a scooped out hollow in the sand, or even an old shoe. You can help robins build their nests. In the spring, leave some grass clippings and bits of yarn and strings in your yard. Look for robins picking them up. Watch where they go. You may be able to find their nest. Help the robins feel safe by not going too close to the nest or touching it. See if you can tell if the eggs have hatched. As summer ends in late September and the day grows shorter, the robins fly south or they migrate. They know it is time to leave because winter is coming. But the robins always return. Listen, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. Spring is here again. So wasn't it great boys and girls to see how the little baby robin eggs grew from a tiny egg to a bird to leave their nest. I can't wait to see your illustration.